FIFO vs. LIFO Inventory Cost Problem 4 Lime Company purchased 400 units for $30 each on January 31st. It purchased 140 units for $40 each on February 28th. It sold 200 units for $55 each from March 1st through December 31st. If the company uses the last in, first out inventory costing method, what is the amount of cost of goods sold on the income statement for the year ending December 31st? Assume that the company uses a perpetual inventory system. Let's go ahead and tackle this FIFO versus LIFO question. Remember, always start, what is the question asking? The question is asking for the cost of goods sold for this company on the income statement for the year at, at issue. Next, which method is being used? LIFO, last in, first out. Very important. So we know LIFO is what we're looking for. LIFO method, I should say, is what we're applying. And we're trying to determine the cost of goods sold. That's what's being asked in this question. Next, put in order the layers purchased by the company. So the purchases. There's only two purchases of units. Again, identical units during the year. Go in chronological order. January 31st. January 31st, the company purchases 400 units at $30 each. And then on February 28th, we're told, which is the next date, we have 140 units at $40 each. So little observation, prices increase or rise over time based on the problem. Again, we're determining cost of goods sold. Next, we're told that the sales, there were 200 units sold for $55 each March 1st through December 31st. Now one thing to note, the $55 each irrelevant for this problem because we're asked about the cost of goods sold, which is about the cost of the units, historic cost principle. So the 30 and 40 that goes into that amount, and it's going to be from those various layers. How many specifically are sold? 200 are sold. So 200 are sold, and how are those going to be made up? Well, LIFO. LIFO means last in, first out, or you can also think of it as fish, first in, still here. So the last items that come in are the first ones sold, reverse chronological order. So we're going to start, start from the bottom, and we're going to go up in that order. So we go to layer two first. Again, reverse chronological order. We need to sell 200. We only have 140. Okay, so we take all 140 from layer two. So 140 at $40. Then we're going to go and continue over to layer one. Well, we sold 200 minus 140 from layer two. We still need 60 from layer one. So layer two goes first. Then layer one, we need 60 at $30. And this is going to give us our cost of goods sold. Because 140 times 40 is going to be 5,600. 5,600. And 60 at 30 is going to be 1,800. We add those two numbers together and we get $7,400. And that is our cost of goods sold. And that's the answer to the question. But wait, there's more. <laughs> Sound like an infomercial, right? Well, we're going to go and additionally look at ending inventory. How do you get the ending inventory if you're asked about that? Well, the ending inventory, we only have layer one. We don't have layer two. We don't have all layer one. We have 400 starting, and we just sold 60. We just sold 60. So what's left in ending inventory? We've got 340 at layer one prices at $30. That is our ending inventory. You can go ahead and calculate that. 340 at 30, right? 340 times $30 each gives you the ending inventory amount. And before we finish, again, infomercial, got more for you. <laughs> you know, get another set. Um, no, the, before we finish, if you are asked about conceptually, life over is FIFO here. Again, Note that prices rise. You can always plug in numbers. Plug in the number one for the dollar price. And if it's rising, two. It's going up over time. Or reverse, two to one if it's going down. And the number of units. You can make up numbers to get these, these items. We've calculated the cost of goods sold. If you're asked about or a client asks you 
about um, conceptual. If you're asked about a calculation, that's what we're doing here. You can also apply this same rationale to a conceptual question. If I ask you in rising prices, will LIFOs ending inventory be higher than FIFOs or will FIFOs be higher than, than LIFOs? You can use these numbers. You can also use the problems I've gone through and you can compare and contrast. Now, one thing to note is that in my examples, I do all rising prices because, well, that usually happens due to inflation. But if prices decline, which that happens, think about like gasoline that goes up and goes down all the time. Well, just reverse it. Just do the, do the determination for prices going up and then it's the flip, right? So if you're looking at FIFO versus LIFO and one result results in FIFO being higher for ending inventory and LIFO being higher for cost of goods sold, then the inverse will be the results for if the prices were going to decline, go down, right? Then LIFO would be the higher for ending inventory and FIFO would be the higher for cost of goods sold. That's basically what you do. You just flip it over. That's it. It makes, and that's why students, once you go through FIFO and LIFO and you master it, it's like riding a bicycle. Once you learn it the first time, yeah, you might, you know, forget it here and there. You, you look at it for a few minutes. Oh yeah, you know, this is something I can easily remember. It's real easy to pick up on versus, you know, other concepts. You might have to relearn certain things like depreciation calculations or net realizable value and account receivable. FIFO versus LIFO, one of these things as, um, not only as a student, a lifetime student, but also a faculty member, when I go back through this, I'm like, ooh, you know, it looks like it's a lot of work, especially when you get tons of layers and tons of transactions. But really the concepts, it's like riding a bike. You know, you haven't done it in a while, you pick it up after a minute, you know, back to it. So with that, go ahead, jump into it. Keep practicing these FIFO versus LIFO questions.